Um, how, what is the solution uh, to this right uh, now? Look, I mean, the solution is obviously negotiations. Negotiations involving, in the first instance, Belarus on one hand, Lithuania and Poland on the other hand, because these are the countries that are immediately affected by this crisis. But clearly, as, as the report has already demonstrated, this is beyond the three. Uh, it, it requires involvement of um, uh, discussions with, with Brussels, with the European Union, with Russia, and to some extent with the United States, because the scope of, of the problem extends beyond Europe, beyond Eastern Europe, and certainly beyond Belarus. You know, uh, the refugees coming from Iraq, they're coming from Syria, they're coming from Afghanistan. And, and, and obviously that has to be dealt comprehensively in order for this process mm -hmm. in the first instance to be civilized. Uh, and on the other hand, um, in, in, in the second instance to, to, uh, uh, to be translated into something that is more systematic, coherent and transparent. Okay, and uh, let me just tell you, Alexei, I'm sure you heard what our correspondent Jack Parrott said that the EU was looking at possibly uh, finan financing a border wall uh, and also sanctioning um, airlines uh, responsible. Um, it mentioned Turkish Airlines and Aeroflot. Your reaction to these two uh, ideas that the EU is considering? Well, I, I think it kind of falls into this narrative that the Russians are running with. The, the EU is trying to make it obviously Belarus forward slash Russia problem by effectively saying, well, this is not the way how to get into the EU and, uh, and, 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 and sort of forcing the Lukashenko regime to deal with this. Uh, by also accusing it of, of trying to effectively fuel these tensions by effectively saying that it's the Belarusian authorities, which EU doesn't recognize, by the way. They still haven't recognized the outcomes of last year's presidential election. So they try to deal with the regime with which the EU says they're not going to have any dealing. So they talk to the what they recognize to be the de facto president of Belarus, Tikhanovsky, who has no power over or authority over over Belarus, they try not to talk to Lukashenko directly. So that, that just adds to, to this multitude of problems and challenges. But certainly building up barriers, fortifying um, EU boundary uh, on the border with Belarus, uh, which started uh, last year with Lithuania in, in, in imposing some um, uh, cardon uh, measures, and now it's now been extended to Poland. Well, I don't think it will it will create any 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 short term resolutions. I think there is also a an even bigger problem that is associated with with current refugees crisis. The refugees get desperate; they try to break through the border, which um, compels for they say the Polish authorities to deploy more and more firepower, more and more military and military hardware on their border. But given the overall state of strategic tensions between, on one hand, uh, Poland, Lithuania, and, and Belarusian regime that none of them recognize. On the other hand, broadly speaking, between Russia and, 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 um, and Belarus as an ally of Russia, uh, on one hand, and NATO, that also uh, causes more escalation because I know Belarusians are amassing their forces, military forces, okay. on the border in response to what the Poles are doing. So that adds to another level of tension and complexity that goes beyond just managing humanitarian crisis. Absolutely. So many uh, moving parts on this uh, migrant crisis right now. Thank you so much. Appreciate your analysis, Alexei Muraviev.